chance to check it out. It's up till March 15th. Um, the title is I Am What I Am Not Yet. Um, and the, the, my approach to my practice is very playful, um, experimental, and open-ended. Um, as you enter the gallery, there's a, a series of works on the left that look um, almost like nothing. Um, uh, they're very quiet works, framed, um, and I'm mostly known for doing sculptures. Um, this series um, deals a little bit with this idea of forced invisibility. Um, and the ways that people attempt to see themselves um, and address the small in particular ways that we move and de delineate <coughs> ourselves. Um, and this series, is a, um, as you approach it, you start realizing there is something here. Um, and this is a the title is I Would Not Change It, which is the, the last line of this letter that I received from my great aunt um, at the age of 84. And she talked about, <clears throat> um, basically she came out to me um, and it, three years before she passed away. Um, and this was a really uh, important relationship that I had with her, um, uh, having a sort of queer model in the family, but also sort of, it, it was never something that was verbalized. And even the coming out letter was never signed. So there was this, um, forced invisibility that she never was able to kind of articulate. Um, the next uh, series of works that I'm going to talk about uh, sort of draw influence from uh, queer theorist Sarah Ahmed. And um, she talks about uh, this idea of the desire line, the landscape architecture term, uh, where folks veer off of the main path. <clears throat> and thinking about these marks as um, deviations or um, improvisations that we make, this disorientating, um, and it refers to this sort of as a queer path. Um, and so this was, you know, one thing I was thinking about in terms of the this next series. And then, um, so here's a, a good example of the desire line, which I'm sure we've all seen or walked on. <coughs> um, so walking on the, the path that is um, the fastest route or the, the path that we find most interesting. Um, and then I'm, I'm trying to combine this idea with the, thinking about uh, the Moivis in a non-mathematical way, other than with the exception of thinking of it as a non-orientable object and thinking of, um, oh my gosh, this is like such a queer form. <clears throat> and, so, and so for me, this, this led to uh, this series of sculptures um, where I'm trying to combine the idea of the Moivis, so it has to take this um, at some point, they have to make the flip that the Moivis makes, <clears throat> um, and thinking of that, um, and then also trying to combine that with um, this idea of the desire line. So I, uh, these are a series that are all made from wood, and there's a, a, um, a different type of wood laminated on the inside, and the path is intentionally interrupted, so the thinking of these um, desire lines and these paths moving throughout them. Um, and then they each rest on these uh, softer um, pillows that are made from different photographs um, of different paths that I've been walking. And so this one is from the Moss Temple in Japan, um, Kokodera, and this one it uses images of the ocean floor through Google Maps, so not from a photo I did not take. <laughs> um, and so you can see these paths <clears throat> intentionally being interrupted. And, and you can see each of these pieces are all biscuit joined together. They're very sort of laborious. Um, uh, and it's also important thinking about these, you know, I like this idea that they're kind of multiple pieces that are all joined together to kind of create this sort of disruptive path intentionally. And then I'm also thinking a lot about um, failure and, um, I guess, intentional paths. So thinking of the way these are, um, for me, and I'm not, they're not computer generated in any way. They're, in terms of that, they're very organically built, low tech, um, which is, and hand built, which is really important for me. And then I'm also thinking about, like, so as I'm trying to make that flip, the only thing I have to do is make the flip. And also, as I'm routing them, if I, you know, as I think I'm making it, 
the failures actually make for a more interesting result than if I had made sort of this perfect. I've, I've done earlier ones where I kind of have that per first kind of perfect <coughs> moibus like this. Um, and it, for me, it was not interesting at all. So this kind of made sort of an endless series of, of um, ways of rerouting these. <coughs> Um, this one is the salt flats uh, over at the Bedwell Salt Park over by Facebook. <coughs> And this one has a pillow of lichen. Um, this one I do, the path does actually continue the whole way um, on it. So you can actually see where the piece starts and ends. Um, here's the series of them. <coughs> And this is, kind of shows you an in-process shot to see how messy they are in, <clears throat> in the making. Um, the next series uh, of works that's in the exhibition um, come from some childhood photos that I was looking through. Um, and, I've, and also, I, re I still have two of these childhood hats. Um, and so I was starting to play with the idea of um, in terms of sort of the opposite to the the sort of quiet letter that I received from my aunt. So looking at these hats as these early signs of, of queerness or ways where I could really embody a personality that um, felt authentic to me. Um, and so there was this, um, I've been trying to recreate all the, my childhood hats where, and they're all titled performing. Um, <clears throat> so they're all like, uh, this one's Butch, Butch Cowboy, <clears throat> and this is the original hat, <clears throat> and then um, here's my sailor hat that I had <clears throat> as a child, and so this one's Performing Sailor, <clears throat> this is the hat in process, <clears throat> and this one um, is called Repairing Butch. Um, the, I'm not a ceramicist in any means at all, um, so I just have sort of embraced the failure of this. Um, and these also kind of came out of uh, the opposite of working with the, the wood pieces, which were extremely laborsome. Uh, this one is Butch Fedora, and here's the Fedora hat. <coughs> and the series. Um, and then also when I was in Japan, I came across this um, this sculpture on the left um, by the artist Kusha, um, and it's of the monk Kuya, um, who is uh, reciting a mantra, a six-syllable mantra, and so these monks are walking out of the mouth. Um, and I couldn't figure out why this, I mean, I just thought it was an extremely contemporary sculpture, even though it was from 1185. <clears throat> and it, it took me about a month before it jarred my memory of this uh, Tim Hawkinson sculpture um, on the right, which is called Sweet Tea Tweet from 2004. And I still haven't been able to check to see if that was an influence, but I'm sort of convinced it is. Anyways, it led, it led me to thinking about <clears throat> this next piece, um, which I ended up titling the, after the title of the show, which is I Am What I Am Not Yet, um, which comes from um, education and aesthetic philosopher Maxine Green. Um, and referring to this enduring and ever grasping pursuit of the sense of completion. <clears throat> um, and so it was ended up making a, a bronze cast of my head, which seemed like the most um, traditional and queer thing to do in this day of age where just sort of representational um, images are not common. And then also just basically scanned myself, so there's uh, myself walking into myself. <clears throat> and, and then, as you enter the space in the foyer, there's a um, um, sculpture on, 
high off the chandelier, which is, I think, you mostly see when you exit, because um, it's not a very common exhibition space. Um, this one is a, a hand-carved wood hands that are two fists. Um, it's titled Fucking and Fighting. <clears throat> Um, so a subtle adjustment of the thumb. <laughs> and then there's um, scales that were uh, actually salvaged from the San Francisco dump that kind of balance and hover over the space. <clears throat> and the piece that...
how we're constantly, whatever, it's the, our, our relationships, our landscape, our political context, all these are, are constantly pushing on us and leaving impressions and, and vice versa, right? Um, and yeah, so they're, they're about sort of that, the way we're kind of, and then also a way to hold these um, sculptures, I think, with the sort of, uh, I don't know, I just felt like the hard wood needed a softness. I don't know, I'm not really sure if I'm articulating that, but um, yeah, yeah. I think this uh, other shoe, waiting for the other shoe to drop, is fabulous <laughs> and deserves um, kind of a permanent form, at least until the next election. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if you have it out somewhere, is it on YouTube, are you getting well, it to pass the views, have you connected it to a blog site? No, I mean, it's well, huge. Thank you, thank you. Um, uh, thank you, I, I hope that it captures that. Um, it's at the Stanford Art Gallery right now. Um, any suggestions you have, on that? we can talk. <laughs> but yeah, it'll, it, an early version is on my website, and then I haven't updated it yet. So, yeah. Terry. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I second your comment. <laughs> someone who has no artistic knowledge, thank you for the tour. Yeah. But in two questions. In yeah. the shoe in waiting for the shoe to drop, are the specific shoes symbolic of any type of group? <laughs> how did you how did you choose the shoes? Well, uh, if yeah. Um, I tried to um, when I, I did the first version of the installation was in Japan when I was over there overseas about a year ago and I actually didn't have a lot of shoes with me, so I ended up just going to the thrift store and picking a variety and trying to get, you know, I went through different versions. Should it be like all, you know, like these men's, you know, black business shoes, this sort of politician? And it just felt like it needed to be, it could also, you could also read it as us rising up and fighting back or something. And so I wanted to try to connect to a variety of people. And so I just tried to have an eclectic group of shoes that could be all genders and all all incomes of varieties of people. <clears throat> um, so some happened to be mine, some happened to be my partners, some happened to be my stepchildren, um, and then there are, a, you know, a few oddball ones. People started giving me shoes um, when I started installing, which I then I like this sort of personal connection, um, and also, you know, so, and I think you know, I, I think originally the piece kind of started from a more personal place. It was before the election that the piece had been in my mind. And so, you know, I was, I was living with someone that was, that I never, you know, had PTSD and I never knew when the next shoe was going to drop. Um, and, and then I think it, you know, the election happened and, and um, it definitely became a broader, you know, it felt like it's something that could apply to everyone. And, um, a more political situation, not just the individual. Second question. Yeah. 